Charles Dia. Getting there nice and deep. Yeah. If you can't tell, we really like Little Caesars here. So today we're going to try and immortalize the essence of the Little Caesars hot and ready. The best way to do that is by encasing it in resin, but it was a bit of a learning process for us. But eventually we got it figured out. So let's get started. Uh, what did you say earlier, Mitchell? This is working about as well as you'd expect for our channel. Yeah, it's far for the course. Eat. It only took us four days. <laughs> I think it is. We gotta weigh it down. Metal pizza. <laughs> pizza floats. We could stuff the crust with I metal. I not at all because it was already that low. <laughs> my, my, Mitchell. You know how to make a nice pie. Like none of this metal scraps on top was my idea, okay? I don't think they're all ready to come off though. Well, this one never should have been on in the first place. So like, it's starting to harden. A little sad Dan's not here to witness this, since this is his idea. <laughs> Delicious. We did it! It's perfect. I'll just take a picture of this and send it to Dan. This is beautiful. Well, I'm back from vacation and I was expecting to come back to a perfectly resin infused pizza and this is what this is what i gave you dan was very proud to say the least <laughs> oh. it was exactly what you expected right uh... just leaving me to do this come on so we learned a few things from this our genius solution is instead of impregnating the crust with resin what if we impregnate it with tungsten carbide please don't say impregnate again so if we can just get these bits surgically implanted is that better yes in the back side to weigh down the edge, we should be good. But we also might just butcher the pizza, in which case we would just make Joey eat it. Mmm, tungsten. You can't even tell that there's a tungsten cutter head under that pepperoni. Oh no, don't ruin it. Abort. That looks appropriately sized. There we go. Oh look, a fresh pizza. Do you want a slice? To, what, what's the word? I don't even remember. So we added about... It's that one mean thing that's like, fresh pizza, save me a slice. <laughs> Missed it by that much. Fresh, fresh pie, pie save, save me a slice. slice. That's, that's good. good. 
That's good. good. It's the next slice. If this floats, then we're going home early. So win-win. I kind of hope it floats. <laughs> We were giddy as a couple schoolgirls. We had figured out the resin, but would our excitement last? Stay tuned. Here at the Water Jet Channel, we take safety very seriously. But back in the olden days, that wasn't always the case. This is Bruce Haymeyer, one of our first employees. Bruce was operating the water jet one normal day while listening to the Bee Gees on his corded earbuds. Bruce was a little distracted, probably from his crippling drug addiction. Bruce quickly found himself in a very sticky situation. Long story short, Bruce is no longer with us. Nowadays, we use Raycon's life-saving wireless everyday earbuds with an all new improved rubber oil look and optimized gel tips for that perfect in-ear fit. And with 32 hours of battery life, our employees have no choice but to keep working until the brink of exhaustion. Raycons have eight hours of playtime and a built-in mic so you can take phone calls wherever you are. Raycons start at half the price of other premium audio brands, but they sound just as good. And with a 45 day happiness guarantee, there's no reason not to try them out. So go to buyraycon.com slash waterjet and get 15% off your order today, or you can go to the link down in the description. Again, that's buyraycon.com slash waterjet. And we would like to thank Raycon for sponsoring this portion of today's video. <laughs> in a way, we did capture the essence of a Little Caesars hot and ready pizza in that it's overly greasy, but it kind of ruined it. Third time's a charm? Sure. Moment of truth. <laughs> we weren't very good at hiding the tungsten. Mitchell did those parts. <laughs> Coming right up. Just add it to the stack of failures. While I was dreaming last night, I came up with this brilliant idea. Why don't we clear coat the pizza before we put it in resin to try and lock in all the juices? Mmm. But this stuff doesn't really stick to grease and I give this a 10% chance of working. Polyurethane stuck the pizza to the cardboard. <laughs> oh, come on. <clears throat> Last attempt. Step one, soak up all the grease. Use some type of epoxy mold release in your mold. This first pour is with a very thin flood coat type epoxy. We just want to coat the bottom of the pan, let that harden, and that gives something for the pizza to rest on. Some light torching. Once that's cured, slide the now stale pizza onto it. We used a deep pour resin. Mix that up and fill up the mold about halfway. We want to let this cure so that the pizza does not float. Light torching. I jumped the gun on this one and did the second pour a little too soon so the pizza started floating anyway. So then I had to get really creative in how to hold the pizza down without getting any weight stuck in the epoxy. At this point, I had run out of deep pour epoxy, so I continued doing smaller pours of the flood coat epoxy on top to cover the top of the pizza. We finally did it. And it's at least better than the one I did. Good, <laughs> good job, Dan. This video has taken so long, I think I've shaved my face twice while we've been making failed resin pizzas. First one, last one. This one is still far from perfect, but 
we're gonna go with it because we've spent about five hundred dollars in resin and it's time. We gotta call it. Now we just gotta get it out and do something with it. It would work better if you had a dirtier mallet. And we got it out. That was super easy, barely an inconvenience. <laughs>